Hello everyone, I'm making this video because I thought maybe some of you would be interested in having a closer look to some Vicburn items I own. They are not all the Vicburn items I own, but it's just a little selection. And in particular, I thought maybe you might be interested in Lord Melbourne autograph. I hope you can see it well. Uh, you can see his signature here and basically this is where the, the address was written. It makes me quite emotional to be honest to think that this was handwritten by him. His handwriting is clear and uh, very elegant. This was written in 1839, which means he already knew Victoria when he wrote this letter. Another item I would like to show you is this printing. As you can see, it shows Lord Melbourne teaching uh, young Queen Victoria. The printing is in good condition and I think it captures quite well the dynamic between the two, both the familiarity between them and the fact that he was teaching and she was listening. And this printing is part of a book called Castle's Illustrated History of England. <laughs> As you can see here, the description says Lord Melbourne instructing the young queen. And there is also Dash over there, which I found really cute. Um, if you're interested, I think you can still grab a copy of this one on eBay. Of course, I'm not sponsorized in any way. Um, I'm just telling you because I, I thought maybe some of you would like to have a copy. Then this book is the first part of Lord Melbourne's biography. Um, as you all know, the most famous biography is by David Cecil. I think this one has really beautiful illustrations. I'm gonna show you my favorite ones. This one is amazing, I think. It really shows how handsome he has been in his youth and he really was handsome. I mean, look at that. He was, I think, in his early 20s when this portrait was made. It says, William Lamb, afterwards a second Viscount Melbourne, from a painting by Sir Thomas Lawrence in the possession of the Dowager Viscountess Hamledin. This was him in his mid life. This is more similar to the man we already know, I mean, in most of the portraits. It says William Lamb in middle life from a watercolor sketch in the possession of Lady Desborough. It doesn't say what age he was when. Um, this portrait was made, but I think it must have been around um, 1835. And this one was Carol. I honestly like it very much, um, even if I don't like the woman, 
she became, but there was a certain amount of bravery, I think, in what she did uh, beside madness and other mental and health issues, I think, but she was something, I mean. It says, Lady Colonel Lamb in Page's costume from a miniature in the possession of Sir John Murray. And these, these were made by Carol. So Victoria wasn't the only woman who <laughs> tried to capture his beauty. This was Carol again. This is a very, you know, famous portrait of her. I think this is the only one I knew even before getting into the thick born stuff. This is another adorable portrait of Melbourne. He was absolutely beautiful. And it says William Lambert 17 from a painting by John Hopner at Windsor Castle by gracious permission of His Majesty the King. We have to remember then when this book was published, Queen Elizabeth wasn't queen at all. And this is a very interesting painting to me because this is Lord Melbourne's mother, Elizabeth. I think there's a lot of uh, in his features. I don't know if you agree with me. It says Viscontess Melbourne in Youth. Um, this book, which was published in 1939, is a very interesting read for any uh, Vicburn fan or shipper or whatever you want to be called. And in general, I think for every person who loves history, biographies and stuff like that, uh, I really enjoyed it. This is the second part of the book. And here we have one of the most famous portraits of Lord Melbourne. Here we see Lord Anne in nine, um, 1838. This was probably the best and most happy year when it comes to his relationship with Victoria because the familiarity was there and Albert was out of the picture. And um, I think it was quite fascinating as a man, even when, when he was older. And if you add to these looks his personal charm, his wit and his culture, I can easily understand why a young girl would be impressed. I would be. <laughs> My partner isn't at home, as you can guess. And I think it's quite interesting to read what David Cecil says here. To my mother, who first told me about Lord Melbourne. I guess if any of us should ever write a book about Lord Melbourne, we, we would say Rufus Sewell, who first made me love Lord Melbourne, or something along this line. And this book was published in 19... 54. Then I have this book that I haven't read yet. It's called A History of England, Victorian England by G. M. Young and it's from the Folio Society. I just went here. It says that there are one, two, three, four, five different parts of the book where, where Lord Melbourne is mentioned. I don't really know, you know, how much they talk about him. Let's see. Oh, it's kind of interesting here that they call Victoria Melbourne Sweet Victoria. They're not implying, you know, anything, really, but I still think it's kind of revealing that they call her Melbourne's Victoria, and they are sort of saying that she was his creature here. Here they're saying the young Queen Victoria, Melbourne's pupil, 
was a wig, according to Lady Longford, a rabid wig with little comprehension of what liberalism stood for. By 1880, however, as we have seen, she wrote of herself that liberal she has ever been, but never radical or democratic. If the Queen, with her views, had been a private person, she might well have asserted from time to time that she had always been a liberal at heart and never a conservative. Indeed, she would not have been a hack conservative party supporter. She would have criticised party policy from time to time and even the party leader. But she would have been basically a partisan, though she would have denied this, writing to Ponsonby in 1880. The Queen is no partisan and never has been since the first three or four years of her reign, when she was so, from her inexperience and great friendship with Lord Melbourne. She calls it great friendship, you know, because friendship wasn't enough. So um, this is it for now. As I was saying at the beginning of the video, I didn't show you all my Vic Bourne stuff because I don't really know if any of you could be interested in seeing a video like this one. And I have no idea if you might be interested in seeing more. Anyway. I hope some of you enjoyed it and have a nice evening or have a nice day.